let's talk about the wave-particle duality. So before I was telling you how light was really weird because it can act like a wave and like, act like a particle, and sometimes you know one works, one the other doesn't work. Sometimes it's the other way around. Well, it turns out matter can do the same thing. So just pointing out here, so to Broglie figure this out right here, that just like light can behave like a particle or a wave, it turns out matter can also do the same thing. For example, electrons, they can behave like particles, they can behave like waves. In fact, we have an equation for this right here, and it goes like this. It's lambda equals h over p. Now this is a bit strange, because of what it says is that something can have momentum even if it doesn't have mass. I mean, you used to, you know, momentum, for example, being P equals mv. You know, where if it doesn't have any mass, it has no momentum. But it turns out light can have uh, momentum uh, because it has a wavelength, and it turns out matter can therefore, because it has momentum, it can have a wavelength, which is really weird. It's hard to think about matter having a wavelength, but it's really the case. So waves and particles become really tangled up. And that's why I put this one here now. Do you remember, uh, this is a long time ago though, but do you remember this song like pineapple, uh, pen, pineapple, apple, pen? Remember this guy's like, I have a pen, I have an apple, uh, apple, pen. I saw this one here and it made me actually laugh out loud. I don't know why I'm so excited about this. <laughs> it's so good, I have a wave, I have a particle, uh, a particle wave. <laughs> oh, I don't know why that makes me so happy. So what does it mean that particles can have both things? Well, particles can have a wavelength, which is really weird, but like, yeah, electrons will actually diffract. So not just light will. Electrons will actually make this weird diffraction pattern where it kind of spreads out. And by contrast, light, which you'd think, well, I can't have momentum because it has no mass. No, it can. Light actually can come out, for example, it can uh, hit this solar sail, for example. So let's say so a, a photon, for example, can hit here, you know, and go like this or here. And that means then it's going to cause this sail then, you know, this thing right here to go uh, in this direction. Here. It's actually going to give it an impulse. And see, because uh, this light right here had momentum, because the momentum changed, that's called an impulse. And that impulse is given to the sail, and that pushes it that way. And this, believe it or not, is actually a way that we humans could use to go really, really far. If you could build a sufficiently big sail, you know, each little photon, although they're very, very small, but there's lots of them, they can end up giving you a, a pretty nice impulse. You can get going a considerable fraction, actually, of the speed of light, weirdly enough. If you saw a light wave, would you wave back? We've got an example here. Now we have light of frequency 457 kilohertz, and I want to focus on this. Watch out. Kilohertz. Remember, that means times 10 to the power of 3 kilo. Uh, that's incident on a wall. Uh, okay, that's great. And we're asked for the momentum of the photons. In other words, this is just an example. It's kind of like that light sail I just showed you, right? So this is light hitting something and imparting a momentum on it. So what is the momentum of one photon? So you might be tempted to use the equation, well, momentum is just P equals mv, but then you've got a problem because light doesn't have a mass, so that means you can't use it. But luckily, we have our new equation. We just learned that lambda equals h over P. Well, that means if I want the momentum, I just get P, and I just put it over here, and the lambda comes down. That means I just have P equals h over lambda. Piece of cake. That should be really easy. The only thing is, is that we do need to figure out then what to do about this. We're given a frequency here. We have f, and I don't want lambda. I want to put in f. So, well, I can go off to the side and do that. So I can say, oh, remember your equation v equals f lambda? Well, because it's light, it's c equals f lambda. I don't want to get lambda by itself, so I say lambda equals, let's see, it's going to be c over f. And I can say that's the case. So that means I'm going to take this lambda equals c over f and put it right here. All right, well, if I do that, let's see, I've got p equals h over, and I've got lambda, which is c over f. So it's going to be h over c over f. And if you're not sure what to do, remember what happens when you divide by a fraction? You multiply by the reciprocal. In other words, I'm going to multiply by f over c. I'm just going to put in my numbers, so that means I'm going to have p equals, let's see, h is Planck's constant, that's going to be 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. I'll have my frequency, which is 457, and you might be tempted to just say 457, but watch out, it's really important, 10 to the 3. Remember, it was kilo. 
That's the part that's really easy to make a mistake there. All that's divided by, let's see, uh, that's going to be C, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. All right, well, I'll just get out my trusty calculator and let's solve this. So I will do a nice fraction here and I'll say, all right, I need Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. All that times 457 and I'll add three zeros to it. That was the important part. And then divided by 3 times 10 to the 8. I end up with an answer of 1.0097 times 10 to the minus 36. Now I'm allowed three significant figures, so I will say the momentum is approximately then, let's say it's one point, and let's see, I can go up to here, oh, the 9 will make this round up. So 1.01 .01 times 10 to the minus 36. Remember what the units are for momentum? It's actually going to be kilogram meters per second because it's like a mass dumps velocity. So it'll be kilograms meters per second. Let's do one last example. This time we want the wavelength of a ball, which sounds weird, but the ball has a mass of this and it has a speed of this. All right, well, let's use our trusty equation again. So we have lambda equals h over uh, momentum. We want the wavelength, so it's nice and straightforward. We're just going to put that in, yes. Except, instead of momentum now, it's a ball that has a mass, so we can actually break this open and say mv. So do you see how we actually said the momentum then was mv? All right, I'm just going to put in my values. So I've got my lambda equals h, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. We're sure using that number a lot lately. Uh, divided by the mass, which is 0 0.61, times the speed, which is 5.1. It's just this. I'm just going to put this into my calculator. So you see, it's not actually that hard, this example here. It's pretty easy. So again, just a nice pretty fraction. Okay, and my answer is uh, 2.13115 times 10 to the minus 34. Okay, if I want only two significant figures then, I will say that it's approximately equal to, let's see, it'll be just 2.1. I'll say times 10 to the minus 34, and that'll be in units of meters. Now, uh, what's interesting about this right here, because you might think that sounds weird to have a wavelength, but yeah, it is its wavelength of the ball. But good news, that wavelength is super small. I remember diffraction has to do with like when you're somewhere on the order of the same wavelength. So because this wavelength is so small, that means the ball won't really diffract. I mean, the ball is so big, it won't really be diffracting. Good news then, solid objects, still solid. Everything's good.